our next speaker to help us with that is Brian Locke. Uh, Brian is the Director of Innovation and Policy and Planning with the Ontario Ministry of Economic Development and Innovation. Is that correct? <coughs> How do you get on a business card? That's what I'm card is this way. Yeah, that's what I said. As one of his key responsibilities, uh, Brian supports um, Helen Bernston in her role as newly appointed role as uh, Special Advisor on Social Entrepreneurial Enterprise. So I'll introduce Ryan. I'm going to find my slides. All right. Well, well, thanks for finding my slides, and thanks, by the way, for that uh, tremendous uh, foundation work. I certainly learned a few things from from your slides, and they were very uh, colorful and interesting. And, and thanks also, Bruce, for the introduction. Uh, and you know, you weren't joking, by the way, about the traffic challenges in getting here uh, downtown Toronto today. I don't know if you guys heard on the news, but there was falling glass off of the uh, Trump Tower, choked up the. Uh, corner of Bay and Adelaide, uh, there's probably still some people sitting there waiting for that to clear out. Um, so That's a regular occurrence, though, isn't it? Falling glass. Uh, falling glass, yeah, but not, not off the Trump Tower. That's an one. So maybe Donald Trump should be spending uh, less time chasing Obama's birth certificate than <laughs> checking his uh, building contractors. A uh, social entrepreneur, Donald Trump, is not. Um, um, so I'm here to share uh, an Ontario government perspective on this uh, fascinating and fast emerging, emerging uh, space. Uh, as Bruce mentioned, uh, I work with the Ministry of Economic Development and Innovation, and uh, I support Helen Burstein, who's the uh, province's newly appointed, I guess it was in late August, uh, that she was appointed as the special advisor for uh, social enterprise. Uh, many of you will be familiar with uh, Helen Burstein name. She's a pretty prominent individual, former chair of the Ontario uh, Trillium Foundation, among other uh, accomplishments on her resume. And I believe that uh, Helen, <coughs> Helen's appointment in the role is an important signal uh, uh, by the government of uh, uh, growing interest and uh, likely future initiatives and activities uh, in this space as we move forward. Uh, there have been a number of signals uh, by the government in recent years. Uh, uh, starting to gradually to turn up the volume on uh, the social enterprise space has been passing reference to the importance, uh, growing importance of social innovation and social enterprise. And by the way, we do use those terms sometimes a little interchangeably. We can be a little loose with the definitions too. Uh, but there's been some reference uh, in uh, previous uh, government <coughs> budgets, uh, fall economic statements and those sorts of things. Uh, and there's also been, i have got the slides for <laughs> There's also been uh, a series of uh, pilot initiatives, uh, some coming out of our ministry and some coming out of other partner ministries uh, over the last uh, number of years uh, as the government um, sort of uh, gradually dips its toe into the uh, social enterprise waters. Uh, but what we do not have right now, I think I'd be the first to uh, admit, is a uh, government-wide uh, coordinated uh, social enterprise uh, strategy. Uh, government's a big place. We are uh, known from time to time for being a bit siloed, um, and uh, we work uh, always to overcome that, and Helen's role uh, as a government-wide uh, special advisor on social enterprise will help us, I believe, do a better job of coordinating up those activities, uh, figuring out what's working, what isn't working, uh, taking a look at where we've had some success in pilot programming and perhaps make some recommendations about whether you know, we need to embed those programs uh, and go uh, to the next level. Um, defining social enterprises. Over the last uh, year or two, I can't tell you how many meetings I've been in, uh, internal meetings, next sort of meetings, sort of haggling over the definition of uh, what constitutes a social enterprise. And I'm, I'm sort of of two minds about it. On one hand, I think definitions do matter. Uh, you know, when you come from the government and you're designing new programming, or the gentleman at the back was talking about the Canada Revenue Agency having sort of definitions for tax purposes, uh, those definitions do matter. Um, but, you know, the other half of me says, you know, if we haggle over definitions, we're missing the, you know, the forest for the trees to some degree. And I like what you were saying earlier about this being a movement. Uh, I think that encapsulates it uh, quite well. 
Um, so our target sweet spot um, is very much um, intended to be an inclusive one. I don't think we're, uh, for the purposes of policy development, not at this uh, stage of the game anyway, uh, zeroing in on anything that is uh, necessarily precise. Uh, our, our goal is to try to be inclusive, but as you can see from the slides, that is the, uh, that is the sweet spot. Um, and uh, the important point is, um, from a legal incorporation perspective, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're agnostic. Um, there are some who would argue, and um, you know, I've been in those debates, that social enterprises have to be incorporated as not-for-profits, and then there are fewer who would argue uh, that they uh, are always incorporated as for-profits, but nevertheless, you get that cleavage. Our view, and I, I know this is Helen's view, is that we need to be agnostic. Uh, and, uh, in terms of where that comes down. Uh, you can have a successful uh, and growing social enterprise that's incorporated either way uh, in Ontario, and there's lots of examples of both. Why does this, uh, why does this matter to us? Um, well, it's uh, situated quite deliberately in the Office of Social Enterprise that, that, that Helen is, uh, is, is helping us with, is situated quite deliberately with the Economic Development Ministry. Uh, because uh, we see this as an important economic development opportunity for, uh, for the province. Um, there's lots of other good uh, reasons uh, to support and value social enterprises, uh, but uh, we believe first and foremost, uh, they're important generators of, uh, of uh, wealth and, uh, and uh, job opportunity. And then all this other good stuff. Uh, government uh, capacity to deliver uh, social programs is uh, under stress. Uh, people are uh, feeling a tax burden. Government debt is at uh, record levels. Uh, and uh, government needs to transform the way that services are delivered. And social enterprise can be an important part of uh, providing those services and uh, providing those solutions uh, for government. Not a panacea, not a silver bullet uh, necessarily. There's still plenty of uh, role for um, uh, traditional uh, not-for-profit uh, uh, service delivery models, uh, but we're seeing lots of innovation occurring in the uh, social enterprise space. Uh, you know, attracting investment uh, to Ontario, Helen and I had an opportunity to travel to um, uh, San Francisco uh, a few weeks ago to the uh, annual SOCAP, um, Social Venture Capital uh, Conference that's sort of the largest of its kind, uh, if not in um, the world, certainly in North America. And uh, uh, what struck us, what certainly struck me about um, the space is how capital is frankly flooding into it. Um, it's very much going uh, mainstream. Uh, you go to a conference in the Bay Area talking about sort of social venture capital, and uh, you might walk in thinking that this is gonna be sort of a, you know, uh, granola crunchy kind of a, a hippie fest. And uh, it was a bit of that, but um, actually it, it was, it, was uh, it smacked very much of a, um, a sort of mainstream uh, financial um, uh, networking event. Uh, you know, all the big uh, companies, uh, JP Morgans and everybody were there. And in fact, uh, some of the panelists were even talking about, is there uh, a bubble uh, in terms of, um, you know, uh, capital flowing to the space. I'm not in a position to really comment on that one way or the other, but the point is is that uh, there's a lot of global capital coming into the space, and we want to make sure that Ontario and Ontario companies and Ontario entrepreneurs are well positioned to capture uh, our fair share of the pie, in fact, more than our fair share of the pie. And so the question becomes, what can government do, what should government do uh, to help uh, facilitate that flow of capital? And, uh, and into Ontario. And by the way, it's not all just um, you know, international capital that we're chasing. Uh, uh, in terms of the mainstreaming of all of this, some of you may have noticed uh, RBC has really stepped up to the plate of the Canadian <coughs> big banks, in, uh, uh, and, and in particular in, in signaling their commitment to the space, uh, a $20 million uh, investment by RBC in the uh, Mars uh, Center for Impact Investing in a uh, related series of initiatives. Uh, that's an important signal. It would be interesting to see what the other banks do, but I have a feeling that Gordon Nixon wouldn't be doing it if he didn't smell uh, a business opportunity there. Um, 
more sustainable solutions, and I mean, this is really at the core of all of this, uh, what's worked in the past in terms of solving uh, intractable social and environmental problems hasn't worked because the problems by and large have not been solved, whether we're talking about poverty or climate change, um, we still need those solutions and social enterprise can be part of uh, finding them. I don't think I need to spend a lot of time uh, on this slide. Um, I think you covered it very well, Petra, in terms of the blended value proposition and what's uh, attractive and different about, uh, about this space and about this movement. Um, I agree with what you were saying, that it isn't necessarily new, I mean, born out of uh, co-op uh, movement and the roots of, of that, and uh, generations of companies that have had uh, blended value propositions, uh, but certainly the language has changed, um, the, the, uh, the prominence of all of it has changed, the, um, uh, the linkages to the youth movement are also very interesting and, and very profound. <coughs> Um, in terms of what's changing, we, we, we talked about Occupy Wall Street. There's, there's definitely some important um, cross-pollinization of ideas that are happening there. Uh, I found it an interesting and telling statistic, actually, that the um, most popular club now at, the, at Harvard, at the Harvard Business School uh, uh, for, uh, for students, is the Social, Social Enterprise Club. Uh, and that's true now, post-2008. Everybody wants to be part of the Social Enterprise Club. Uh, so there's some, definitely some interesting uh, dynamics there with the, uh, with the youth uh, enterprise movement. Uh, the sector is growing. I wish I had some statistics, uh, uh, more statistics that are specific to Ontario. Um, I don't. Uh, we've got surveys in the field right now I'm trying to get a handle on exactly how many social enterprises uh, we, we've got going right now. My best guess uh, based on um, uh, the data that we do have, is uh, 15 to 20,000 uh, in the province of Ontario, uh, and uh, obviously uh, many thousands more uh, jobs associated with that and growing. I talked about um, uh, the capital that's uh, that's flooding into the into the space. Uh, by many estimates, including J.P. Morgan, uh, we're going to be at a uh, trillion dollars in. New risk capital uh, uh, within a decade, which is tremendous. Um, and, and clearly, we've got statistics from from the UK, whereas Petra, I think, rightly pointed out, uh, they've uh, they've got they've got a jump start on us. Um, and uh, we've been uh, working very closely with Nesta and some of the organizations in the UK to uh, understand and learn from their experience, and incidentally, also learn from their mistakes. Uh, and if you had someone up here from Nesta uh, speaking, I think they would uh, admit uh, that they've made a few along the way, which is to be expected. Uh, there's lots to be said for being uh, the first mover. Uh, there's also something to be said for following closely behind uh, and, uh, and learning from uh, what's gone well and what's not worked so well in some of the other jurisdictions. Uh, continuing on with this sort of uh, jurisdictional scan piece, we had an opportunity, speaking of the legislation, uh, Helen and I did to meet with one of the architects of the uh, California law. I should say plural uh, laws, because they've actually got two uh, hybrid <coughs> legal forms in California, almost sort of competing with one another. Uh, and it's all very new there as well. Uh, it came into place on January 1st. And this is kind of what I'm talking about in terms of, uh, you know, is there really a first mover advantage? <coughs> They've got two laws now. Uh, have they got it all figured out? Um, BC uh, clearly doing uh, uh, some uh, interesting work, uh, and they've, as Petra mentioned, moved forward with a geographic <coughs> corporation uh, model. We're taking a look at that. Um, interesting stuff that they've done around procurement, particularly around um, the recent uh, Winter Olympics and uh, leveraging uh, spending on the Olympics. Uh, going into uh, uh, bids by uh, community benefit corporations. Uh, uh, is there a page <coughs> from that book that we can take in Ontario, particularly with the 2015 Pan Am Games uh, coming up? Um, I think the point I'm trying to make there is that um, in the past, uh, when there's been calls by government to support you know, 
entrepreneurship or innovation, the, the government response has been to find new money and kind of uh, pour in. Pour in. Uh, and in some cases that's worked well, and in other cases uh, it hasn't worked quite as well. Uh, but what's changed is we don't have any new money. Uh, what we need to do is look at ways of making our existing uh, resources uh, go further and spend uh, money more wisely to have uh, social and economic impact. So I use procurement as an example of where you know, government's going to spend the money anyway. Uh, uh, is there a better way to do it to have, uh, to have that impact? I mentioned off the top that we've been um, sending signals, uh, the government has now for a few years, about the growing importance of, of social enterprise. And has put out uh, a handful of sort of policy pronouncements, all stopping short of a, um, uh, a coordinated um, you know, multi-year uh, social enterprise uh, strategy or plan. Um, so um, pilots are great, uh, and we've learned a lot through uh, some of the pilots um, that we've uh, that we've deployed, and we continue to learn. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the people that we talk to. <coughs> Um, clearly are making the, 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 the point to us that if you want to be a leader in this space, uh, if, you, if you want to look like the UK, or if you want to look like a made in Ontario version of the UK uh, in the social enterprise space, uh, you need to have a coordinated action plan. You need to have a strategy that, that cuts across all of the different um, government departments and agencies and, and partner agencies. So these are some of the pilots uh, and uh, uh, early stage initiatives that we've been pursuing uh, and continue to pursue. I, I don't think I'll, I'll hit on all of them. Um, one of the more exciting ones um, towards the bottom there is uh, something called the SVX. Um, what that stands for is Social Venture Exchange. Uh, and uh, some of you may have heard of it. It's a, uh, it's a capital market, uh, basically like the, you know, the, the TSX. Uh, for social ventures, uh, bringing together uh, private capital and, and, um, and companies looking for uh, equity investment. It's a terrific initiative uh, coming out of Mars. Uh, we're not allowed to call it the Social Venture Exchange. We have to call it SBX uh, because uh, that's what the OSC, uh, the Ontario Securities Commission, <laughs> uh, told us. And as you can imagine, uh, getting something like this up and running, working within uh, the framework that's uh, established by the OSC, uh, um, you know, does uh, take time, but um, you know, in typical Ontario fashion, our approach isn't again to be the first to do it uh, necessarily. Our approach is to get it right. Uh, um, that's been the approach that's been taken. Um, you know, with the regulation of our capital markets uh, writ large, and I think uh, the evidence would suggest uh, that we weathered the storm far better than our perhaps more financially innovative cousins. Uh, to the south of the border, and that our smart financial regulation may have had something to do uh, with uh, the way that all pay has worked out. Um, just to leave some thoughts on some uh, some principles uh, moving forward, because we don't have all of the answers uh, by any stretch of the imagination in government. We know that uh, a collaborative approach uh, is is going to be uh, required, uh, you know, to get there. Um, and uh, collaborating uh, with academe and opportunities like this to come and speak you know, at a university uh, is a rare but also important one for us. So I appreciate again the invitation. Um, I think we talked about the uh, not getting too hung up on definitions, um, at least not at this stage of, of where we're at in the policy development process. Um, Scaling programs, um, you know, it's again great to do pilots. Pilots are important. You can learn a lot from pilots. Uh, but if you want to scale things up, if you really want to have impact, you need data, uh, and that's certainly been the experience with um, uh, social impact bonds, uh, a new financial instrument that's uh, uh, taking hold around the world. Um, again, in the UK, but not not only there. Um, and uh, lots of great opportunity uh, in social impact bonds to change the way uh, government uh, traditionally has procured services and to be far more outcome focused and social impact focused and get better value for money. But in order to really execute on the promise of that, you need to have data. 
Uh, you need to have open data, and these are not necessarily areas that um, government has traditionally uh, excelled in, and we need to get better. Uh, and then having better data and learning from those experiences allows you to then start to shift your resources more towards the prevention side of things, uh, which, is, which is really where we want to be. Um, I hope that was helpful, and I do hope that we have time at the end uh, for questions uh, and uh, hopefully some answers. Again, I don't have all the answers, uh, but we can talk a little bit more about, uh, about where we're headed. Thanks. Thank you.